guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the leak code question search a two dimensional matrix. All right. So in this question, we want to write an efficient algorithm, which searches for a value in an M by N matrix. The matrix has the following properties. So the integers in the first row are sorted from left to right. And the first integer of each row is greater than the last integer of the previous row. All right. So in very simple words, uh, what that's basically telling us is that the top leftmost value, so the top and the leftmost value, which in this case would be this, is the smallest value, and the bottom rightmost value is going to be the greatest value. And that makes sense. Over here we have 1, and over here we have 60, which are both uh, respectively the smallest and greatest values. And over here we're given a target value, which in this case is 3, and our goal is to search for it. So it's a simple search algorithm. All right, so how exactly do we solve this question? All right, so the first uh, kind of way that will come to your mind is to just search through it until we find the answer. And if we don't get it by the end of it, well, that obviously means that we don't have anything. But that would take up a lot of time unnecessarily. And I'm sure there's a better solution to that. And we want to use the fact that our matrix is sorted to, the advan to our advantage. So how exactly can we do that? So what I'm going to do over here is we're going to break it up into two parts. So the first part is going to be to find the row. So in, in this part, all we're doing is we're kind of locating at what row do we have our matrix. So how do we do that? So in this case, let's say the target is 3. So we're going to go to the first letter of each uh, row, sorry, a number. And we're also going to go to the last number of each row. And we're going to check if our target value is greater than or equal to the first number. So whatever is at the zeroth index. And if it's less than or equal to whatever is the last number. So if that is the case, that means that in that row, we're going to find our value. So real quickly, uh, let's say we're looking for 3. We're going to compare, is it greater than 1 and less than 7? It is. So that means we're going to find it in this row. Uh, let's take one more example. Let's say we're looking for the number 30. Uh, so in that case, we're first going to go here. So 30 is not greater than uh, less than 7. So we're going to skip this row. Then we're going to go over here. So 30 is greater than 10, but it's, less than, it's greater than 20 as well, which is not correct. Then we're going to go over here again. So 30 is greater than 23 and it is less than 60. So that means we're going to find 30 in this row. So the first step is finding the row. Pretty simple. Now, the second step is once we find a certain row, we inside of that row, we want to find whether the number exists or not. And to do that, we're going to be doing a binary search. So I'll just go through it really quickly, what a binary search is. But if you don't know what it is and you want a full explanation, I did make a video about it. All right, anyway, so in a binary search, what happens, let's say uh, we narrowed down to this row. Or sorry, let's just go to the first row. And we know that the number three is in the first row. So we're only looking at row one. All right, so over here, what's going to happen is we're going we're gonna to have one pointer on the leftmost. So it starts at the zeroth index. And we're going to have one pointer at the rightmost index, so at seven. And each time what we're doing is we're going to go to the middle value. So in this case, the middle index is going to be considered to be this value three. And what we're going to do is we're going to do one of three things. So first, we're going to check if our if our middle value is the same as our target. And in this case, it is. So we're just going to return true. But let's say it's not. Let's say we're looking for the number five in this case. So then what we're going to do is we're going to compare our middle value with the target. So if the current value that we're on is too small, so if it's smaller than our target, that means that we want to look for bigger values. And in order to do that, we're going to move our left pointer to the right of the middle value. Similarly, let's say that our mid value is way too big compared to our target. So in that case, again, we want to get as close as possible to our target. So if the mid value is way too big, then in that case, we're going to move our right pointer to the left of the mid value since we want to look for the smaller numbers, which are going to be on the left hand side since it is sorted in ascending order. All right. So hopefully that did make sense. And uh, this question should be pretty simple. So yeah, let's just see what the code looks like. All right. So we're going to start off with checking if our matrix even exists. So if not matrix, uh, then in that case, we're just going to return false directly. So in this case, we don't actually have a matrix, but we're going to look for one more condition. So we might actually have a matrix which is empty. And in order to check for that, what I'm going to do, so if not matrix or not matrix, then we're going to go to the zeroth index. So if whatever is at the zeroth index is empty, that means that we do not have any actual matrix. So in either of these conditions, we just directly return false. All right, so after this, we're going to go on to the second step, which is finding our row. Sorry. Okay, so over here, we're finding our row. And let's start off by initializing the value of our row at zero. So we're going to assume that our row currently is at the zeroth index. So now what we're going to do is let's go through inside of a for loop. 
So to do that, I'll just do for r in range. And what are we going to be iterating over? So we're going to be going over each of our uh, rows. And to get that, we can just get the length of matrix. Since each of the lists inside of our matrix represents one row. And that's the same as the length of the matrix. All right, so this represents the index of each of our rows. And now what we're going to do directly is we're going to check if the smallest value or the biggest value is actually our answer. So in that case, we can just directly stop the entire function and just return true and get it over with. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to check if our target is equal to the matrix and we're going to go to the R row and we're going to go to the zeroth value, so the first value. And if that is the case, we're going to return true. Okay, and another condition we have is the last value might also be the same. So if the last value is same, let's just do the same thing. So I'm just going to copy this over and then put an and, oh, sorry, not and, or, and we're going to check if the target is equal to the last value inside of that row. And if either of them are true, then obviously we end up returning true. But if that is not the case, then what we're going to do is we're going to check whether we're inside of the range. Uh, so the range is basically bigger than the, whatever is at the zero index and smaller than whatever is in the last index. Okay, so to do that, let's just do an else if. So else if our target is greater than matrix, uh, we're going to go to the R row and we're going to go to the zero index. So that, and it also has to be, so our target also has to be less than the last value. So to do that, we go to matrix R and then last is negative one. All right, sorry. Okay, perfect. So if both of those are true, that means we found our row. In that case, we're going to change our row value to R. So now our row over here is going to be R. And what we can do is we can just direct, uh, directly break it. Okay. So that gives us our row. And uh, instead of storing this in a variable, if you did really want to save some space, uh, once you get to this point, you could do the rest of our binary search directly over here instead of doing it separately. But I'll just do this way since I think it's a little bit more cleaner. Okay. So over here, now we're going to look for element in row. Okay, so we're now looking for the element inside of our row. And to do that, we're going to be using a binary search. And like I said, we're going to have two pointers. So we're going to have a left pointer and a right pointer. Now, the left pointer always starts off at the zero index, so the leftmost value. And the right pointer is going to be the length of our current row minus one. Okay, and to get that, and the reason we're doing minus one is because we're going by index and uh, the indexing starts at zero. Okay, so we're going to do length matrix and we want to go to a certain row. So what row are we going to go to? Well, to just make it simple, we'll just go to the current row that we're on, which is row. All right, perfect. So we have our left and right values uh, in place. So now we're going to go inside of a while loop. Again, if you do want a more in-depth uh, explanation of how binary search works, just check out the video I made. Okay, so while the left value is less than or equal to our right value, then in that case, we're going to first look for the mid value. So mid is going to be L plus R minus L. Uh, and then integer division by two, or you could just do R plus L and then divided by two. Okay, uh, and then now that we have our mid value, we wanna check if that actually exists uh, or if that is the same as our target. All right, so if our target over here is equal to whatever this value is, and to get to this value, we're gonna go to our matrix, we're gonna go to the row, and then we're also then going to go to the index of the mid value. And if that is true, then in that case, that means we found our answer, and we can just select directly end up returning true. All right, perfect. So we have this and over, and what if our target is greater than our matrix value? So in this case, let's just do that. So target is going to be, sorry, greater than make out. I'll just copy this. So matrix row mid. So, uh, sorry, I meant to say mid value. And we're just going to go to that mid value over here. And if our target is greater than that, that means that we want to look for the bigger values. We're trying to look for the bigger solutions so that we're going to move our left pointer to the right. So now our left pointer is going to be mid plus one. And if this is not the case, that means that our target is less than our mid value over here. So in that case, we're going to right value is going to be mid minus one. We're going to move the right pointer to the left and that should be it. And if we did not find any answer, we're going to go out of here and we're just going to end up returning true. Sorry, I meant to say return false here. So if none of these, uh, if we don't end up returning true over here, at the very ending, we end up returning false. Sorry. And one more thing, I, I, okay, I spoke about it, but I didn't do it. Sorry. So length of matrix, and then we're going to subtract it by one because our indexing starts at zero. Sorry. Okay. And finally, our solution was accepted. And like I said earlier, instead of uh, storing it inside of a row variable, you could just put all of this over here, right over here, inside of our else statement. All right. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do let me know if you have any questions, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.